20 cal to wound a man, 30 cal to kill him. A good rule of thumb for rifles, and one that's held true for a century. But every rule has exceptions, and sometimes you need an exceptional rifle. Barrett are an American firearms manufacturer, best known for their 50 caliber rifles. So what's the need for such a powerful round? Where did the idea for a shoulder-fired 50 caliber rifle come from? And how on earth do you manage the recoil? World War I was a wake-up call for militaries of the early 20th century. New technology brought radical changes to the battlefield. Aircraft, radio, artillery, and tanks. Early tanks were heavy and slow, but their armor was not insurmountable. Half an inch of hardened steel at most. By 1917, the Germans added a steel core to rifle rounds, called the K-Bullet, to better pierce this armor. In response, tank armor became thicker, rendering conventional rifle calibers ineffective. So, the Germans devised a larger caliber, the 13.2 by 92 mm tank and flieger round. It was intended for a machine gun, but the bolt-action Mauser 1918 Tigerwehr was made to serve as a proof of concept. This was the first anti-tank rifle. Much larger and heavier than conventional rifles, and with punishing recoil, but it was able to reliably penetrate 26 mm of steel armor and was a major threat to tanks. The Americans had taken notice. Their 30 cal machine guns were proving less effective against armored planes, so they tasked John Browning to develop a new round. Inspiration was taken from the French 11 by 59 mm Gras round, which had proven effective against observation balloons and captured examples of the German 13.2 mm rounds. The 50 Browning machine gun cartridge was the result, with a half inch, 40 plus gram bullet at muzzle velocities exceeding 2,700 feet per second. Prototypes were finished and ready for testing in November 1918, just as World War I came to an end. The first weapon to fire this new round was the M1921, a water-cooled machine gun, an upscaled M1917 with improvements to the recoil buffers. Its immense weight, 55 kilograms with water, made it difficult to wield, and issues with early cartridges meant the rate of fire and muzzle velocity were suboptimal. So, while the M1921 was adopted in limited numbers by 1929, development continued on the 50 cal platform. The result was the M2. Air-cooled with a variety of barrel options, the improved design entered production in 1933. During World War II, the M2 saw extensive use, mounted to aircraft, ships, boats, armoured vehicles, or on a tripod for infantry use. It was a workhorse, owning the affectionate nickname of Marduce. By this time, Tank armor had advanced to the point where even anti-tank rifles were ineffective. A man-portable weapon with sufficient kinetic energy simply wasn't possible. Instead, high-explosive anti-tank weapons, rocket launchers such as the Panzerfaust and Bazooka, became the infantryman's counter to armored vehicles instead. The era of the anti-tank rifle had come to an end. The M2 Browning had established its own niche, however, that of the heavy machine gun. In fact, it remains in service to this day. Its powerful round, stable platform, and heavy barrel also conferred favorable characteristics for long-ranged, accurate fire. The weapon was equipped with a telescopic sight as early as the Korean War, but the most famous demonstration of the M2's long-range ability came in 1967 in Vietnam. A US Marine Corps sniper, Carlos Hathcock, achieved the longest confirmed sniper kill with a scoped M2. 2,250 meters, a record that stood for 35 years. In 1982, Ronnie G. Barrett was a professional photographer in Tennessee. He was taking some shots of a river patrol boat with mounted M2s 
when inspiration struck. He pondered the commercial viability of a shoulder-fired, semi-automatic 50 caliber and sketched his plans for a new rifle. Most people he approached about his idea were skeptical. Why would anyone need a 50 caliber rifle? Perhaps the naysayers were right, but he eventually found manufacturing partners and some four months later, he had his first prototype, the Barrett M82, named for its year of design. To mitigate the heavy recoil from the 50 BMG round, the barrel is crowned with a colossal muzzle brake, which redirects propellant gases backwards, significantly reducing the felt force. The recoil that remains is distributed through buffers, springs, and the weight of the weapon itself, resulting in a surprisingly manageable weapon. A second prototype was shown at a gun show in Houston, where Barrett was able to secure starting capital for a business. Barrett Firearm Manufacturing was born, and an initial production of 30 rifles began. Sales were slow to begin with. Turns out the civilian market for a 50 caliber rifle priced at $3,000 in the 1980s is small. There wasn't much in the way of competition, however, and the combination of a powerful cartridge, recoil mitigation, and a man-portable package opened up interest to a rather specialized market. The CIA procured an undisclosed number of Barrett's rifles for use by the Mujahideen in the Soviet-Afghan war. Quite what they did with them isn't well documented, but it's likely they caused some trouble for the Soviets. A small number of Barrett Light 50s also found their way into the provisional IRA's hands in the mid-80s, notable for use in the South Armagh sniper campaign during the Troubles. In 1989, the Barrett Light 50 was adopted by the Swedish Army in an anti-materiel role. In 1990, the United States Armed Forces did the same, designating it the Special Application Scoped Rifle and deploying it during the Gulf War. When paired with the Ralfos Mark II 11 round, which features a tungsten penetrator core, explosive charge, and incendiary tip, there are few targets this rifle can't tackle. The naysayers were wrong. Ronnie Barrett's initial sketch had found its purpose, and Ronnie became one of only seven individuals to design a firearm adopted by the United States military in the last century. The first variant, known as the Light 50 or M82, was modified slightly in 1986 with the M82A1, which came with flip-up iron sights and a larger muzzle brake. In 1987, there was the M82A2, a bullpup reconfiguration of the rifle, designed for firing from an upright position, such as when engaging a helicopter. The M82A1M was the version designed for the US military, with a Picatinny rail, rear grip, and monopod socket. This variant was later designated the M107 by the US Armed Forces, and the M82A3 by the US Marine Corps. There were some bolt-action variants too, the first being the M90 in 1990, followed by the improved M95 in 1995. The move to a bolt-action variant was spurred by the US Army's initial desire to select a bolt-action weapon for the M107 role. In fact, the Barrett M95 was initially selected as the XM107 before a decision was made to drop the bolt-action requirement, and the M82 was adopted instead. More recently, there's the XM500 introduced in 2006. It's a lighter, a more compact derivative of the M82 in a bullpup configuration. While 50 BMG has always been Barrett's signature caliber, there have been other offerings due to differing needs and the potential legal restriction of the cartridge in some regions. For instance, there's the Model 98B introduced in 1997, chambered for 338 Lapua Magnum, and the MRAD or multi-role adaptive design which supports a wide range of cartridges by a field-changeable barrel. Today, Barrett's rifles are used by over 50 nations worldwide, with the original 50 cal design the most prominent. Such is its status that in 2016, the Barrett M82 was named as the official state rifle of Tennessee. The rifle's imposing presence has also helped secure its place on screen, and the Barrett starts turning up in movies from the late 1980s. 
Perhaps the most notable early appearance is in 1987's Robocop, where the Barrett is styled into a futuristic looking experimental weapon called the Cobra Assault Cannon. Impressively large, the weapon sports a high-tech scope and fires explosive rounds with a predictably Hollywood effect. Since then, the Barrett has turned up in films seeking an impressive looking sniper rifle. It was a relatively rare sight in the 90s, but it became more popular post-2000 with appearances in Shooter, The Hurt Locker, and the 2008 Rambo. This later surge in popularity correlates with a greater interest in military matters, spurred by the contemporary Iraq war which dominated news. Another key factor in the relevance and recognition of the Barrett in media was an increased depiction in video games. The earliest games that feature the Barrett in any prominent sense are the tactical military shooters of the early 2000s, such as Ghost Recon and Delta Force. These games tend to offer a range of military hardware so that you can tackle missions in different ways, and the Barrett fits logically at the top of the sniper rifle tree. The weapon is always equipped with a scope, as befits its intended long-range roll, and the large size of the Barrett is conveyed with a view model that occupies a significant part of screen real estate. The distinctive muzzle brake caps off the barrel's length, and, almost without exception, the virtual 50 caliber round will take out enemies with just a single shot. The early tactical shooters had a hardcore fanbase, but over the coming years, more casual FPS genres exploded in popularity, bringing a modern arsenal, Barrett included, to a much wider audience. Battlefield 2 staked this claim in 2005, but it was Call of Duty 4 a couple of years later that really heralded the start of a new FPS era the modern military shooter. This was the Barrett's time to shine, and COD 4 put it directly in the spotlight during its memorable Pripyat mission. In one shot, one kill, you take up a hidden position with an emplaced Barrett M82, and are tasked with making a critical long-range shot on a target during a narrow window of opportunity. The bullet travel time, wind direction and strength all play a key role in delivering the 50 caliber round on target. But firing reveals your position, hence the mission title. Once compromised, the Barrett proves its worth one last time before your hasty getaway, buying crucial time as you down an incoming helicopter. It's a memorable sequence and a favourite mission of many. So of course, the Barrett was usable in multiplayer too, where its immense power and satisfying report secured favour with snipers who sought the utmost in stopping power. Call of Duty would be immensely popular in the years that followed, with numerous sequels and no shortage of imitators. Along with them, the Barrett would see frequent return. The Barrett is normally presented as the most powerful conventional weapon in games that feature it. Of the already mighty sniper rifle category, the 50 cal reigns as an undisputed king. Often its anti-materiel role is reflected by an elevated damage profile hurting armoured opponents or vehicles, where most non-explosive options simply wouldn't work. Its depiction is at its best when it serves this rank and roll, and with a sound design that resonates with the impact a 50 caliber weapon ought to exhibit. At its best, it exudes power. It's not all good news though. In the name of balance, the potency is tempered with heft. It's a large, heavy weapon to wield, and so this often means your movements are slowed and actions made deliberate. The chunky magazine is seated home with a satisfying pivot, and the first round chambered with a purposeful pull on the bolt handle. This is a weapon of precision, the game reminds you. And if you want to effectively apply it, a degree of patience is essential. It's all worth it though for the base gut punch of the shot and the powerful satisfaction of one shot, one kill. As the dust settles, all that remains is the echo. The Barrett is an impressive weapon on all fronts. From its alarming size, the reach and potential of its round, and the technical feat of taming its recoil. It fills a role that many didn't realize existed but Ronnie Barrett's initial inspiration propelled him to an upper echelon of American arms designers. Today, there are other 50 caliber rifles, 
but the Barretts will always be the original Light 50. Perhaps it's overkill. Perhaps a conventional rifle would do just fine. But perhaps you want to be ready for an exception. The Barrett 50 Cal. Uncompromised. Unyielding. Unstoppable. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, farewell.